Ladies and gents, hello and welcome. My name, of course, is Open the Potato. Welcome back to Project Hospital. That's right, with the Infectious Diseases DLC. Nonsense installed. Oh boy, it's looking good. Thank you very much to everyone who left a comment letting me know exactly what the heck I should do and where the heck I'm going wrong. A uh, couple of things to fix straight off the bat that we can fix. Up on the neurology floor, I neglected to install some key scientists into key positions here. So we need to make sure that everyone is employed over here so that we should hopefully be able to... Yeah, okay, I think this is a little bit better. Yeah, so now we've got scientists in the cardiography unit and also in the neuro exam unit, which I think is pretty important. Also, something that I did not realize, but apparently on the ground floor, outdoor sidewalks can actually get dirty. I was blissfully unaware that that was a thing that could actually happen. Also, this game has a really, really weird tendency to just not have music at certain times, which is, you know, a little bit funky, I guess. Uh, we also need to get a chief doctor in neurology, which is good. Are you a good boss by any chance, Christopher Hernandez? I, I don't actually... I don't actually know... I don't actually know if anyone's a good boss here, but that's okay. It doesn't particularly matter. Either way, what are we hoping to accomplish over the course of today? Why the heck is the music just disappeared? It's just gone. It's just... It's... Oh, it's so awkward. Uh, right, let me just set up the cleaning over here. Uh, duh, 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 duh. Can I zone outside areas as corridors? Planning only, not on foundations. Hmm. Okay, so it turns out that I cannot actually zone as a corridor here. That's kind of interesting. That is kind of interesting. Okay, collapsed patient is being transferred to another hospital. Honestly, that's okay. Right, what do we want to accomplish over the course of uh, over the course of this episode? It's a very, very good question. First of all, we have taken our hospital back down to not crazy levels of uh, of people. There's no bed in HDU hospitalization. Uh, that's a bit of a problem. That's a bit of a problem. We'll we'll just have to we'll just have to let you wait around for a little bit. Anyway, yeah, so we've taken down the, the numbers of, uh, of patients that are being admitted. It's going to take us a little while to sort of filter all of the, the people out of the hospital because we had, like, some insane numbers. We had some insane numbers of, uh, of patients uh, over the last couple of days. I think we had, like, 160 or something. Honestly, picking up that, uh, picking up that Medicare that Medicare insurance thing is is just crazy. It's really, really challenging. Anyway, what do we want to try and fulfill over the course of today? It's a great question. I would very much like to have no untreated patients for two days. I think it's a little bit of a stretch. 5,000 daily profit at the orthopedics department. That is probably possible. Also, there is a lot of patients that are currently leaving, but that's okay. As soon as 8 o'clock rolls around, we will be grand. Uh, treating 3,500 patients in order to in order to get more patients from the shareholder trauma center hospitalization. That's okay. Can I move you to the bone department? You definitely have a bone issue anyway. So there you go. Just just head to the bone department straight away. Uh, yeah, so as well as doing all of that, as well as doing all of that, patient can be treated as leaving. I get it. There's a lot of stuff happening. Look, I, video game, I understand. I understand. I gave you far too many, I gave you far too many patients to treat and you're you're taking it out on me by giving me lots of lots of dings, lots of notifications. I appreciate that. That's that's it's just awful. Cardiovascular surgery. Uh, see, that's a funny thing, actually. The funny thing about cardiovascular surgery, well, there's there's no funny things about cardiovascular surgery. Is there actually is there actually a nighttime surgery team? There is actually a nighttime surgery team. There is actually a nighttime surgery team, but it's just not being... It's not being used, apparently. What are you doing? Reserve for chest assuscitation. Yeah, where the heck is the nighttime surgery team? Maybe there isn't a nighttime surgery team, actually. Uh, do we have an anesthetist in the evening? We totally do. We've got an anesthetist during the day. Maybe we just need more doctors, to be honest. I mean, could very well be the case. Let's just hire a couple of additional doctors, shall we? Go for it, go for it, go for it. There we go. And one more. Sure, cardiovascular surgery. What the heck? Can't hurt, right? Okay, we got anyone that's prepping for surgery? We got somebody that's prepping for surgery. That's good. We need to fill out the doctors a little bit more. I'm pretty determined that that's what we want to do. Uh, right, this this music issue is uh, is actually pretty... Is actually pretty... Uh, pretty detrimental, actually, because it's... It's just weird. All right, let me let me put on some other music. I can put on some, I can put on some nice vibes. 
and of course, just as I, just as I, just as I complain about the music, the music comes back. Okay, well, <laughs> wow, this is very, very meta episode, isn't it? Anyway, right, so we're going to wait until 8 o'clock in the morning. We're going to get a monstrous amount of money, I hope. We're in for, we're in for the big bucks as soon as, as soon as 8 o'clock rolls around. We're currently minus 77,000 down the hole, only 220,000. Uh, dollars in debt, which is actually pretty good by my standards, believe it or not. All right. Patient that couldn't be treated is leaving. Knee dislocation. Okay, so we need to do more. We need to do more surgeries. We need to do more surgeries here. That is that is absolutely clear. We need to do more surgeries in the orthopedics department as well, because that was where another issue was arising. Anesthetist, anesthetist. Yeah, I mean, look. To be honest, we should just be hiring. We should be hiring as many people as we possibly can now, I, I think. Like, we're just getting to that stage where we just need as much treatment capability as we possibly can get here. There we go. Okay. Right, so, at 8 o'clock in the morning, how much are we in for? Maybe 30 grand? Maybe up to negative 47,000? Negative 47,000 bucks? That, to be honest, wouldn't surprise me because we have had a lot of... A lot of patients in the hospital. Pharmacy is too small? Really? I mean, that is very, very surprising. Almost to my predicted level of uh, of income, but there we go. We've got four, we've got four pharmacists, if I'm not mistaken, all employed. Yep, we got four pharmacists all employed. That's pretty darn good. Okay, so you know today's a little bit of a, a sort of leveling out, stabilizing. You know, if we were a commercial airliner, this would be cruising altitude, right? We're 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 just coming off the the ascent. You know, perhaps a little bit of a difficult ascent. Perhaps we were ascending through a layer of cloud or something. I don't know patient is about to leave the clinic just get hospitalized okay just get hospitalized there's not enough stretches in cardiology that's not my problem speak to your line manager or something you can be regularly hospitalized and then you can be given those doesn't need to be given in uh doesn't need to be given in bed but that's fine collapsed patient is waiting for a bed there's no free bed at icu hospitalization okay fine right turns out that we did end up actually making a lot more money than i expected which is which is pretty darn good okay so there's a couple of different things that we want to do over the course of this episode i've already i've already bumped my gums enough about uh, about what we need to do now 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 we've got an x-ray we've got a ct scan we've got an mri machine yes all good however what we also need to get more of also this needs to be zoned as a corridor for radiology doesn't it yes it certainly does we need to get more icu capacity and we need to get it i don't want to say on every floor because it doesn't necessarily need to be on every floor but i kind of want to i kind of want to put it in the odd place just to make sure that we've got capability as and where we need it it could be on this floor but i don't really think i want it to be on this floor i kind of want it on active floors you know i kind of want it on on active floors i mean how much would it cost me how much would it set me back for another another couple of ICU rooms? ICU station would cost 16. Well, the other thing to consider is that the doctors are all down here. That's the thing, right? Is that we've got the doctor's offices in this area. So I'm kind of incentivized to try and keep the ICU over here. You know? It's, it's just something that we need to consider. Because we don't really want... We don't really want the doctors to be running around the entirety of the hospital looking, you know, for somebody to save. What about what about an ICU or two over here? I know I'm, you know, massively in debt, and this is going to cost me like fifty-eight thousand dollars or some obscene amount. But something like that, right? Or what about over here? Let's leave a space of four. And then let's just commit to that. All right. Nice. So that costs altogether far too much. $58,000. Wow. I was absolutely spot on with that. Is our ICU patient being... Okay. We've actually got two people, I think, reserving these ICU beds already. So that's kind of nice. Uh, that is... That is fine. That is... That is fine. Also, is anyone cleaning? Is anyone scheduled to clean? Yeah, this co corridor is scheduled to clean, but it's being cleaned by the emergency staff, which is totally fine. All right. Collapsed patient is waiting for a bed. Let's get let's get everyone in here as quickly as we possibly can. I've kept a little walkway here free, so perhaps we can get more trauma centers if need be. Oh, yes. Another thing that we need to get done 
as a as something that we that we just have to do over the course of this episode is we need to get more ambulances right we need to get more ambulances the reason that we need to get more ambulances is not because i want more ambulance patients it's because i want to get access to the quick snap care objective that is one of the last uh, sort of default in-game default base insurance companies that we uh, that we get and if we're able to purchase five ambulances even though it costs an obscene amount of money then that will give us access to events which give us access to more patients etc 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 you died from cholera okay that is less than ideal but there you go we'll send you on your merry way I say merry way you're dead so it's not not very merry but there we go Okay, also, the distinct lack of observation rooms that we have is is quite good, actually. Um, I'm not entirely sure why we need so few observation rooms. I guess we're good at rotating people out. Also, we got a lot of people in intensive care, actually. Yeah, that's a bit of a, a, bit of a concern. Can I make sure that every department's certainty is at high? Yeah, every department's certainty is at high. So that's putting extra strain on our hospital, but it means that we're not going to end up having means that we're not going to end up having issues, I hope. Right, so let's see how much cash we're able to make over the course of today. I'm, I'm optimistic, actually, that we may be able to, to claw back some of this negative 51,000 that we ended up spending on, uh, on the old ICU. Clinic is about, the clinic is about to leave the patient. The patient is about to leave the clinic. Why? Not enough stretchers at the internal medicine department? Okay, we just need more stretchers, just in general. Okay, you're being called. That's excellent. I, I don't like it when patients leave the clinic, to be honest. Pancreatitis. There's no way that I can... Yeah, okay. We have a lot of... We have a lot of people that are leaving the clinic. And that, to be honest, is like my main... My main issue at this moment in time. We just have... We just have too many people that are leaving the clinic. How many people are waiting for tests? Honestly, that's far too many people that are waiting for tests. We need to do something about that. We need to do something about that, and I have no idea what we're going to flip and do. I mean... Maybe we could do something? I just don't know. I just don't know what we can do. We can get ourselves another hematology lab if that would... If that would assist. I'm just not convinced that it actually would. Where the heck has everyone gone? We've, we should have, like... We should have, like, 12 people working in this room, and we just have no one working in this room. Yeah, not enough stretchers. Okay, so there's not enough stretchers in every department. That's, a uh, That's a pain in the backside. Wonderful. So we'll send you off. We'll collect the... Collect the check. Great. Patient is leaving. The reason that you can't... The reason that you can't be treated is because... I... I don't know. I don't know at all. Going to pharmacy? Wait, you have been treated? Special medication that suppresses production of blood cells and bone marrow? Okay, so you have been treated? Okay, weird. Uh, not entirely sure why that's the case, but yeah. We need to stick on top of our clinic situation. We can't have too many people leave the clinic. A patient is about to leave the clinic, so yeah, this is exactly... Exactly what the issue is. You're actually being treated, you've got celiac disease, Literally just diet modification and then a whole bunch of other pills and tablets for all of the other symptoms. That's fine. Patient is leaving. What's the issue with you? How's the general surgery clinic looking? The general surgery clinic's actually looking totally fine. I'm a little bit worried that all of the sort of specialized... All of the specialized clinics are perhaps a little bit under capacity, but it actually looks like they're fine. Yeah, it actually looks like we're managing with like two two doctors' offices at every at every department. We managed to treat ninety two patients today, which is which is very very good. Uh, what is the mission for Medicare actually? Because Medicare usually has a, a bunch of high patient number objectives, but it's no, it's treat no one pa uh, have no untreated patients for one day for thirty five thousand dollars. Okay, you're gonna leave the pharmacy. Waiting in pharmacy. I have why. How? How is nobody able to, to eat here? Is the problem is the problem entirely because everyone goes for lunch up in the up in the cafeteria of the administrative services room? Are you a pharmacist? Yeah, you're a pharmacist. Allowed roles selling medicine. And you're just having lunch all the way up here. I mean that's really bad, in fact. Like it's 
that's bordering on detrimental, I would say. I mean, how do we fix that, though? How do we fix that? I mean, it's not even that long of a long way at the pharmacy. I mean, the pharmacy is like one really, really easy way that we can make an obscene amount of money. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, because it, it either involves bringing the... It either involves bringing the cafeteria down or the pharmacy up to the top floor. I mean, I'm not I'm not really about that life to be honest. I don't really want to bring people all the way up to the top floor and then have them traipse all around my hospital and at the same time, you know, drag their mucky shoes throughout the entirety of the building, leaving pharmacy. I mean, there is diddly squat that we can do about that. I mean, we have four we have four pharmacists and they all decide to leave on a lunch break at the exact same time. I mean, you know, you couldn't make it up. You couldn't make it up quite frankly. Where are you off to? You're off to- you're off to somewhere else. Okay, well that's- that's awful. Wait. I'm gonna follow you. I'm gonna follow you, Lisa Johnson. Because I'm convinced that you are going to... You're going to use the restroom over here? Okay, so that- that's another issue, is that I guess, even though- even though the- Even though the emergency toilets over here are absolutely, categorically, completely a shared room? It looks like the admin staff are just continuing to head, like, all the way up to the top floor. I mean, this may seem a little bit crazy. However, what are the chances that I could build a toilet right over here? Some admin toilets right over here? I mean, it's... It looks a little bit ridiculous, but, I mean, come on, right? If it's gonna save time, then it's gonna save time. <laughs> <laughs> Sure, okay, let's do it. Let's do it. So that should at least cut down on half of the travel, right? Here's hoping. And it's still technically like a shared space, so... Should be... Should be usable by everyone. Is what I'm saying. All right, pay off a little bit of the loan. Brilliant. Patient is about to leave. Okay, the toilets have become a hotspot. Lovely. That's good. Why do you want to go to this vending machine over there? There's a perfectly good vending machine over here. There's no difference in vending machines. Just go to this vending machine. That's cool. Monitored patient is collapsing. Honestly, the fact that patients are collapsing is the least of my concerns at this moment in time. 106 patients treated, by the way, today. Not bad. 32 had to be sent to another hospital because of my incompetence. Well, I say lack of incompetence. Lack of capacity is probably more of a problem. I would say. Patient is collapsing. Yeah, you can be diagnosed as well. Cool. Trauma center hospitalization. Let me guess. Woo, rooms with critical workload. Okay, we should have a little look at this actually. So emergency department, nothing is critical. Wow, there is a lot of critical. You hear that? The music just cut right out. Really, really weird. Um, yes, yeah, so there are a lot of critical things. There are a lot of critical rooms in the radiology department. So, not the x-ray. The CAG room has a critical workload during the day. It's got a critical workload during the night, the CT room anyway. Uh, cardio cardiology, cardiology has a critical, has a critical, 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 critical. Wow, everything is critical? So all of these rooms, all of the cardi, cardiography rooms are all on critical? That's kind of strange, isn't it? So I've got three flipping radiology rooms and none of them are... None of them are just working. No free bed in ICU hospitalization. I'm afraid you're going to have to be transferred to another hospital there, bud. Yeah, I mean, we're not going to have an ICU room spare, and I'm not prepared to build any more at this moment in time. Patient is leaving. I'm almost certain that this is to do with a test. PCR testing. It's done in a hematology lab. Yeah, so there there we go again with the whole with the whole capacity issue that we've got. Yeah, it's not It's not good. It's not ideal. Not ideal at all. I think I'm gonna get myself another another hematology lab. I, I think that it has to be done. And to be honest, if I do if I do something like what I'm about to do, let's wait until tomorrow. Let's wait until tomorrow. I'll show you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna build a brand new corridor and I'm gonna see if I can build another hematology lab and also some more cardiography units, which apparently are a severe 
a severe, uh, a severe, put a severe cap on the amount of stuff that I can actually do. I'm still really kind of irritated that that's, uh, that that's a thing. Is it because the, is it because the staff are sort of commuting up and down the elevator in order to get to their, oh no, 20% lower insurance patients? Uh, can I transfer you out of here? No, but you're just waiting for the surgery team. I have a surgery team in the cardiology unit at night, but what is it doing right now? You're idle? Where is the cardiology team? Where is the cardiology team? Are they operating in another theater? No. Where's the surgery team then? I, I didn't hire the I didn't hire evening surgeons for nothing. Where the heck are you? You're idle? You're the idle one. Okay, well where's the evening anesthetist then? Performing first aid to another dude over here? You should be performing surgery though. I mean how many operations do we have to do in the in the cardiography unit? Okay. High priority that. I don't know if that's going to make a single pip a difference, but I'm not happy about this. I'm not happy about this, guys. What are you, what are you doing? First, performing first aid to Thomas Hill? Is everyone performing first aid? Is that just is that just a thing that's happening? Okay, it's all right. You're being transferred to another hospital, so we don't have to deal with you. Excellent. So now can we do some surgery, please? Okay, so get the doctors back in here. Idle, idle, and idle. Where is my flippin' surgeon? Where is my flippin' surgeon? Why are you not- why are you not doing surgery? Everyone is- everyone is idle. Uh, and I have absolutely no idea. Am I missing something? Am I missing like a really crucial- Am I missing medical surgeons at night? No, I've got two medical surgeons at night. Moving a stretcher. You're filling your needs. We've got an anesthetist at night. We do have an anesthetist at night. We've got a surgeon at night. We've got two doctors to assist if they need to. We've got two- Medical surgeons or medical surgery nurses, should I say? We don't need any cardio techs. We don't need any of that, and yet still we're not able to do uh, an evening operation for some obscene reason. Is it because? Is it because I've uh, I've not allowed my surgeon to do surgery? Perhaps I, I don't know. Uh, it's very very strange. It's very very strange, and I'm very very upset that that's not that that's not happening. Long wait for examination. CRP. Where's the CRP? taking place. Is that going to take place at a any office, diagnostic unit, observation room, trauma center, ICU, at any department at, except neurology? I have no idea. I have no idea where we can do that, I'm afraid, bud. No idea where we can do that. The patient is about to leave the clinic. You are filling your needs. Look, I, I can tell what you've got. I, I know what's up, dude. I know what's up. So you can go and you can go and do that. Maybe we just need to get some water things, water dispensers around the place. That's maybe what we're after. Anyway, I did say that we'd wait until tomorrow. Let's wait until eight o'clock in the morning when uh, when hopefully we get a whole bunch of cash and we can be a little bit better off financially. There we go, leveled up, brilliant, wonderful, love to see it. Look, the finances, the finances are not bad. The finances are not bad. The finances are acceptable very acceptable highly okay middle of the road not terrible right but they could be better but you know things can al almost always be better feels like we've stabilized a little bit a little bit more today patient is collapsing it's going to be a little bit better once we um yeah once we free up these ICU beds i mean i'm hoping that people are just going to magically walk out of the ICU because we've got a full ICU at this moment in time yeah, okay. Well, I guess we'll see you at 8 o'clock in the morning, won't we? We'll see you at 8 o'clock in the morning. We're negative 80 grand down the hole, down the drain, in the negative, in the red. But that's okay. Don't even worry about it. Don't even look twice. Okay. Great. So, ICU. Yep, the ICU. Three beds, four, five, six beds. Six beds in the ICU have just freed up. Wonderful. Clinic is about to leave the patient. No, clinic is not about to leave the patient. The patient is about to leave the clinic, however. Right. Something else that irritates me is that there is no way to, like, allocate the, the tests between different labs. I don't think so, anyway. Yeah, there's no way, there's no way that I can allocate 
specific patients to specific labs. That would be far too... That would be far too reasonable. Okay, you know what? Let's take out a little bit of a loan. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. Believe me, I do know. Uh, okay, so here's what I was gonna... Here's what I'm gonna do. Here's my plan. Is that three wide? That is three wide. Right? Three wide. Now, let's go for... No. Medical labs. That's right. That's what we're after. Hematology lab. And we're going to slot that right in there. Brilliant. So that's going to cost us... That's going to cost us a lot of money. 30 grand. It's, it's a lot of money. But that's completely fine. You know what? Keep up... Keep up the expansion. Keep up the expansion. Keep up the... The building. We're on form now. Okay. Here's what I want to build. I want to build... More cardiography units. I didn't think that I'd have to do this because honestly, I was kind of anticipating that the number that I had built was going to be plenty, but apparently I was sorely mistaken. Let's get this corridor expanded just a smidgeroonie. Make sure that there are walls everywhere. Let's cut down this wall. Let's cut down that wall. Excellent. And so that should be that should be us. That's good. Now, what I want to do actually, let me see if I can rezone half of this waiting room as a radiology waiting room. So we'll make like what? This half a radiology waiting room. And then this half can be a medical labs waiting room. The reason that I think that that's going to be okay is because I'm about to hire a whole bunch of additional medical labs people. The other good thing about doing this at the earliest possible time in the morning is that you've already paid wages for the night shift and therefore we're going to get full utility out of our out of our members of staff before we actually have to pay them there we go okay so you yep literally just hire hire everyone hire everyone okay so at the end of that we end up with four additional four additional scientists we end up with two additional cardiographers and we end up with three brand new buildings. I, I think that that is, I think that that is fine. Patient is about to leave the clinic. Okay, let's try and shoot for two patients leaving today, and that's it. I, I really am keen. Okay, well that w I included you in the in the count. I thought you'd actually already left, but that's that's fine. And I, I guarantee that you're leaving because your your tests haven't been done in a in a timely fashion. That's okay though. Right, we want to keep an eye on the number of tests that are being run in each of these places because there's critical workload. Critical workload at this specific hematology lab and for the life of me, I wish I could figure out why. Uh, registered nurse, you do clinical specialist. Can I make you... Oh, I can actually schedule training? Oh, interesting. Huh. Huh. Interesting indeed. Okay, what was the other thing? Patient is collapsing. Cholera. Isolation, hospitalization. That's not available at this moment in time. What are you doing just chilling out here? Performing lab result delivery. Paul, uh, Paul Scott. Having, having these technologists just chill out this room, outside the room here, is actually a bit of a time waste. David Hernandez, where are you? So do you wait in the internal medicine waiting room for your for your moment to come before you get called up to the before you get called up to the to the lab? There's no free bed in observation. Uh, honestly, I can probably I can probably just move you to yeah, move you to the correct department. Yeah, that's completely fine. Don't observation. Just go straight into uh, go straight into regular hospitalization. We don't need you to be in observation, to be honest. People in observation don't tend to stick around there for for altogether too long. And I must say that that's that's really really good because usually, usually, I I have no idea what's wrong with patients and they need to stay in the observation area for forever. But thankfully, we seem to be filtering we seem to be filtering patients through reasonably quickly, which is actually which is actually quite good. I, I will say I'm not I'm not entirely displeased with that. Yeah, look at this. Look at this. Look at the pharmacists. The pharmacists. The pharmacists. Oh my goodness. We have four pharmacists. And all of them are... Just taking a break. That's terrible. And there's no way that I can stagger their lunches. When did you just get back the window? Where did you go? Where did the... I don't understand. I don't understand. 
The pharmacists. Oh, they're so... They're so bad. Look at the shop. Look at the gift shop as well. This is free money. This is free money that we got right here. It's $50. Long wait in the pharmacy? Yeah. Not surprised. Given that we only have one in four people actually working. I mean, do we need to build a cafeteria? Maybe we just dezone the cafeteria. So that our so that our employees don't have an opportunity to eat lunch. Okay. I mean, it looks like when we've got this few patients, we can totally keep up with the with the demand in the pharmacy. But I will say, I'm not happy about it. I'm very, very not happy about it. It it irritates me how we've got nobody in the flipping pharmacy. <laughs> There's just no one. There's just no one there. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. That's a big old problem. Okay, I mean, look, patient numbers are looking good today. I feel very, very in control of the of the situation. This is this is looking and feeling much better than yesterday for sure. Patient is collapsing. The fact that we have patients that are collapsing fairly regularly is is a problem, but it's okay. Okay, the cardiography unit is is remarkably chill. Do you not have a surgery to go to? No, you don't have a surgery to go to. Do we have any surgeries to perform at any department? We got one surgery to perform at oncology and one surgery to perform at general surgery. And the chances of us performing that surgery before the close of play today are are what? Performing performing surgery. Okay, yeah, so it looks like you're gonna stick around Joseph Foster until the surgery has been performed. Wonderful. That's great. And then the music goes yet again. How dreadful. Okay, let's get let's get Joseph in here. I appreciate the doctors are working a little bit past their uh, past their usual past their usual working hours. But this is a big surgery for us. Four thousand and fifty bucks is what it would usually cost. But we're only getting three thousand five hundred and ten due to the fact that there is a negative on uh, lower insurance payments. Yeah. Long wait for examination. Temperature measurement. Yeah, so we can't do temperature measurements. Scheduled waiting for free examination room. Any office slash diagnostic unit. Uh, I mean, the diagnostic unit thing, we can't actually, we can't actually do that, can we? It's a high high usage during the day, high usage during the night. Not accessible for patients. You see, the thing is that it isn't accessible for patients. That's a that's a real problem actually, and we we've always had this issue with temperature measurements, and it always blood pressure blood pressure measurement i mean this again needs to be taken in a in a in any office slash diagnostic unit but we can't build we can't build an infectious diseases we can't build an infectious diseases diagnostic unit because if we do then presumably some some schmuck is going to roll in a roll in an infectious patient, and it's going to lead to it's going to lead to uh, to the old to the old outbreak occurring again. So I, I kind of am I'm loath to do that right now. I mean, do we not just have enough nurses? We've got like as many nurses as we possibly can. We've got as many doctors as we possibly can, barring like one. We got nurses that are idle at this moment in time. I'm I'm pretty certain that it's. Patient that couldn't be treated is leaving. COPD. Why are you not able to? That's that's a bit of a pain, but ah, whatever. Patient can't be fully treated. Why? Why? Hospitalization required for the treatment. I can put you in isolation, hospitalization, but presumably, ah, uh, yeah, we don't have any. We don't have any regular wards that are free. Oh, okay. I see what the problem is. Okay, well, I'll put you into isolation, even though I mean it's not a big deal. Cholera is not contagious. Yeah, so the whole... I don't understand. I don't understand. Maybe we just need to get more diagnostic units. We need to get more diagnostic units and zone them appropriately so that people wear masks into the area. Because I think that the diagnostic units are the only way that we can actually do the temperature measurement and stuff. I mean, it would help if we didn't have a high level of certainty in the infectious diseases area. Come on, video game. Thank you very much. Unpause. Thank you. Collapsed patient is being transferred to another hospital. The infectious diseases department, I mean, look, we've invested a lot of money in this place. We've invested a lot of money in this place, and I don't feel like, 
I don't feel like it's doing particularly great. I mean, it is making us like a lot of money. Like if we have a little look at yesterday, have a little look at yesterday. Oh, okay. Turns out wasn't making us any money yesterday. Day before it made us a decent amount of money. Day before that made a decent amount of money. How? 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 All right. Well, we'll queue you up for autopsy, and you'll probably complain about the fact that you've been waiting for uh, you've been waiting for that for quite a long time. But no big deal. And you're just not able to, you're not able to do, to do what you, what you need, you're not able to get the treatment that you need to get either. Ugh, that's irritating. That's really, really irritating. I mean, that's two patients straight off the bat that are being transported away. I mean, I wonder, is there like a, no free bed and regular hospitalization? That's okay. You can go into isolation hospitaliza hospitalization. It's completely fine. Is there, is there like a choke point in this hospital that I'm, that I'm just missing? Is there, is there something is there something that just doesn't quite fit that is like the root of all of the problems? Patient can't be fully treated. I mean, you can be, but you need to be presumably, you need to presumably be treated in a, or you need to be hospitalized in a regular ward. I guess I will hospitalize you in a regular ward. I mean, I kind of was a little bit, <laughs> not exactly enthusiastic about going up to 440,000 in, uh, in debt. $440,000, but you know, for the good of the patient or something, I'll do it. I'll take one for the team. Just promise you won't laugh at me. Okay, we'll regularly hospitalize you, and then we'll give you we'll give you that. Okay, excellent. Yeah, still not happy about it, though. Still very, very unhappy about it. How are we doing surgery-wise? I, I tell you what, I do wish that I could get, like, a good overview of all of the surgeries that need to be undertaken. Okay, so again, the cardiography unit seems to be, seems to be the one that can't, seems to be the one that, okay, preparing for surgery, good. Rachel Anderson, you're not our, you're not our surgeon. You're not our surgeon either. You are our surgeon. Preparing for surgery, what is the issue here? Is the issue preparing for surgery... And you're checking patients. Is the issue that we just don't have enough nurses with the uh, with the surgery, medical surgery capability? Returning stretcher, going to workplace. Okay, here's an idea. Here's an idea. So you're not going to do patient transfers. You're not going to do patient care. You're literally just going to be a surgery nurse, okay? I want two surgery nurses who literally only do surgery. And I want you to assist at surgery. You can assist at surgery. You are only going to do surgery. You can assist at surgery. You are only going to do anesthetity, anesthesiology. Sure. Excellent. Okay. So then we should be golden, right? We should be absolutely golden. Everyone is preparing for surgery. Performing first aid. Nope. No, you're not. Getting a stretcher. Brilliant. Okay. We're ready to go, I think. Sarah Baker, hospitalized and sleeping. Come on, fetch the fetch the patient, and then let's let's go. Kidney stones, you've got kidney stones. Hospitalize, and then we'll give you shockwave, lithotherapy or whatever. Should go for it. Fine. Yeah. So why why are we not able to do the surgery here? Like there's there's some there's some reason why we're not able to do the surgery, and I just cannot for the life of me figure out what the heck it is, because we've got we've got the people that we need for the surgery. We've got the we've got the surgeon. We've got the we've got the surgeon. Uh, you you can do cardio surgery. You're just pretty terrible at it. Sure. Excellent. Yeah. So you know the night the night crew. We've got a surgeon. We've got a we've got a couple of medical surgery nurses. You know two people. Yeah. You two have got the exact specialty that we need. And moving a stretcher, preparing for surgery. Do we need to just wait for you? Is that what the whoops? Is that what the issue is here? Hold on, back to back to cardiology, please. Are we just waiting for the for the other medical surgeon to sit down? All right. Returning stretcher. You're not supposed to be doing. You're not supposed to be doing this. You're not supposed to be doing this at all. There's no free bed in isolation, hospitalization. Frankly, not my problem. Okay, can we please just do a surgery? We literally have. You're going home now. So, wow, we failed to do two surgeries during the evening? I mean, that is that is a chronic, chronic failure. And I, for the life of me, cannot figure out what the heck... What the heck is going wrong that is stopping us from doing surgery. 
you're going home. You've either got lupus or something else. Angiography? Angiogra- and an angiography. Being called? Let's have a little look. Pharmacy's too small, it's probably... No, there's no- there's no issues with the pharmacy. Hospitalized and going to bed. You're gonna be kept in observation for a little while. Okay, fine. I mean, I'm okay with that. How are we doing financially? Very, very, very good, actually. Very, very good financially. We still have 20% lower insurance. It's <sighs> 20% lower insurance thingies. This is not good. This is not good. This is not good. Okay, let me go to neurology. Neurology clearly needs a kick up the backside. And I'm, I'm here to give it to him. Okay. Why are you schmucks not able to do surgery at night? You've got all of the qualifications you need. You've got a, a nighttime anesthetist. You've got a daytime anesthetist. You should be able to be... You know, you should be able to be kicking out the surgeries as quickly as possible. Okay, so we've got one surgery on Fraser Jones. Performing craniotomy barber right. Okay, I mean, that's fine with me. That is absolutely fine with me. You're idle. Barber right is ready to go. Here we go. Get the... Get the doctors. No, these are the nurses. Get the nurses in. Okay. These nurses are only gonna do surgery. Alright, you... Let's have a little look. Let's. Look. I want to trace this. I want to trace this exactly. Every every team, every department needs a direct surgery team. So you, you were doing you were doing neurosurgery. Okay. You were doing anesthesiology, and you are assisting at surgery. Right. Autopsy finished. Fine. We know what you died from. You were already diagnosed with it. Okay. Good, so let's get the surgery done as quickly as we possibly can. We've got an advanced neurosurgeon who's actually very, very good. Uh, to be honest, I would like to get you trained up to be an advanced neurosurgeon. That would be pretty good, if it's all possible. All right, excellent. And then performing cranioptomy on Fraser Jones. Wonderful, okay, so having a dedicated surgery team is exactly what we're after. I think the next stage is gonna be the next stage is going to be... I tell you what, this is exactly what the next stage is. This, I will literally show you exactly where the next stage is. It's right here. It's coming right up. What we're going to do is we are going to have... We are going to have a on-call room. A small on-call room for four doctors. Right? Right over here. And then we're going to have... Yep, thank you very much. And then we're going to have a small nurse's station as well. Which we cannot apparently... Yeah, there we go. Small nurse's station. Small nurse's station right over here as well. Uh, except, you know what? We could make it... Could make it over here. Or we could indeed make it over... No, we can't make it over the road. That's that's an illegal maneuver. Yeah, you know what? Let's, let's throw it in there. Throw it in there. That's fine. And then give me... Give me that. That's that's fine. Look, we can, we can just about deal with that. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. This is going to be the surgery the surgery nurse and the surgery on-call station. Okay, so you, Frank Smith, are going to be working from here. Right? Frank Smith. This is this is where we this is the way that we need to do this. Okay. So we got Frank Smith over there. Who else have we got? We got Frank Smith, we got Jane Baker, Jane Bra Baker and Fraser Clark, okay? Jane Baker, Fraser Clark. No, 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 not Fraser Clark. Fraser Clark, right, brilliant. And then we have got who have we got? Who have we got doing uh, doing the surgery? The surgery. Who are the surgery nurses? We're gonna have to find out. So I have them exclusively on surgery. No free weight, uh, no free bed in observation. That's that's not a problem at all. There probably will be a free bed in observation in just a second if you uh, if you just give it time. You've got you could have any number of things actually. You could have any number of things. You could have any number of things, and you've got giant cell something or other. Hospitalized, transported to room. Okay, I suspect that you're already 
you're already en route. Okay, let's head back up to neurology. I think that this is honestly the way forward. So we have a dedicated surgery team and we're able to just pump out surgery after surgery after surgery. That's what I'm kind of looking forward to. That is what I'm kind of looking forward to. And to be honest, replicating this on every on every level is is really really the way forward, I think. Right? You are you are on medical surgery yet. Yeah. So, Richard Martinez Missing staff, don't worry about it. Richard Martinez. So I can see at a glance, right? I can see at a glance where the heck my... Uh, where the heck my surgery team is at. Okay, so get you moving over there. Wonderful. And you, I am convinced. Jane Lewis, yeah, you're the other one. Right, so Jane Lewis. Okay, that's looking, that's looking really, really good. So we don't need like a huge... We don't need huge offices over here, but we need, you know, we need something. And that's going to allow us to pump out surgeries much more quickly. We don't have any surgeries on the on the list, but that is fine. And then, you know what that allows us to do? So everyone over here, you're not going to assist at surgery. Not at all. Not even worried about the pharmacy. That's not my primary concern at this moment in time. You're not allowed to assist at surgery. You... We've already determined not allowed to assist at surgery. No one is allowed to assist at surgery. Everyone does diagnostics, patient care, all of that sort of stuff. Uh, Christopher Thomas, you're not doing, you're not doing that at all. You're literally just doing, you're literally just doing patient care, patient transfers, completely okay. Patient care, patient transfers, brilliant, 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 brilliant. So the neurology department is the first department to get this spicy new, spicy new look. And I like it a lot. I'm happy with it. It's going to make, it's going to make things a whole heck of a lot smoother. It's gonna be, it's gonna be real good. It's gonna be real good. Does anyone else need to be changed around? I don't think so. Ah, no, tell a lie. A couple of people do need to be changed around. You do not do assisted surgery. Uh, actually, no, whoops, you're, you're the night crew. We need to, we need to move the night crew as well. We need to move the night crew as well. Who's this? Lisa Williams. Lisa Williams, Rachel Harris. Here's what we're gonna do. Surgeon is gonna be Lisa Williams. Yep gonna get you you're gonna do that we're gonna do we're gonna do that we're gonna do you who did I say oh, what, what did I say the name was Rachel Harris that was it all right Rachel Harris brilliant Rachel Harris in there and then we need one other schmuck to do assisting in surgery Thomas Miller you're just the ticket Right, Thomas Miller in there, you are literally only going to do assisted surgery. You need to only do anesthesiology, which is grand. Then we need real quick, just two two surgery nurses. Judy Anderson and Dana Barkley. Judy Anderson, Dana Barkley. Both of you only do only do that. Okay. All right, let's have a little look. Let's have a little look see. Let's have a little look see to see if that works a little bit more effectively. I think, I think, and I hope that that is going to force the departments to to do the surgery. Um, not to mention the fact that the proximity is is super duper close. You know, we've we've got hardly any we've got hardly any walk distance between the operating theater and the uh, and the offices, which I think is going to make, which I think is going to make all of the difference. So, you know, it allows our surgery team to just focus entirely on prepping surgery. It also means that we can level people up specifically to do, you know, specific things. So, for example, uh, Frank Smith, you are going to do, you are going to do neurosurgery forever. And therefore, it's going to cost us 800 bucks to train you up. That's probably a price that we're perfectly willing to pay if you're going to be a better neurosurgeon. I mean, you know, neurosurgery does seem like the most complex of all of the surgeries, but in saying that, you know, it's 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 just something, it's just another aspect that we need to improve upon, you know? It's it's just surgery that we need to that we need to improve upon. And so we're gonna. But that's okay. We got a day team, we got a night team, prepping for surgery, Dana Barkley, that's fine. There we go. Hospitalized and treated. You've had your you've had your fracture surgery done. 
That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay, so we need to roll this out across the across the rest of the hospital, which, to be fair, is is probably gonna get done at some point. But I think that this is I think that this is the way forward. You know what, folks? We're gonna end this episode right here. And um, let me know what you think of this strategy. Actually, I'm I'm keen to to get your feedback and opinion. Um, we're still stabilizing. I think it's still taking us a little bit of time, but we've got a we've got a remarkably large hospital here. Uh, so it's just a matter of time before it all starts, hopefully, working smoothly in concert, but, you know, it might never happen. Uh, we didn't get more ambulances, much to my dismay, but that's okay. We've got to leave something exciting to do in the next episode. Thanks as ever for watching, folks. Thanks as ever to the fantastic Patreon supporters over at patreon.com forward slash the potato. Also, thanks to Banana Nanana and C Senpai for being the two $25 plus tier patrons. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.